the sixth consciousness is empty. Ananda said, I am the Buddha's beloved younger cousin, whose mind so admired him, that I left home to serve and make offerings to the Tathagata and to all Buddhas and enlightened teachers in lands as countless as sand grains in the Ganges. If I am determined to do all difficult Dharma duties, it is because I use this mind, and even if I now slander the Dharma, causing my excellent qualities to weaken forever, it is also because of this mind. If it was not mind, I would have no mind, and would be like the earth, or a log, for nothing exists beyond what I feel and know. Why does the Buddha now say that it is not mind? This frightens me, and also this assembly, and not one of us here can avoid being doubtful and suspicious about it. Will you be so compassionate as to enlighten us? From his lion seat, the Buddha, in order to teach Ananda and the assembly, so that they could all achieve the patient endurance of the uncreate, or Anutpatika Dharma Kshanti, held out his hand to touch Ananda's head, saying, The Tathagata has always said that all phenomena are manifestations of mind, and that all causes and effects, including all things from the world to its dust, take shape solely because of the mind. Ananda, if we look at all the worlds and all existing things, including even grass and leaves, and investigate their roots, they are all made of matter and have qualities. And even the empty void has its name and appearance. Then how can the pure and clean, profound, bright mind, which is the underlying nature of every discriminating mind, be without its own substance? If you grasp firmly the knowledge which comes from your discriminations between feeling and seeing as your true mind, it should have its own nature, independent of all sense data such as form, smell, taste, and touch. As you now listen to my sermon on the Dharma, you differentiate because you hear my voice. The seventh consciousness is unreal. Even if you succeed in putting an end to all seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing, and so preserve inner quiet, the shadow of your differentiation of things or dharma still remains. I do not want you to hold that this is not mind, but you should examine it carefully and minutely. That which continues to possess discerning nature, even in the absence of sense data, is really your mind. On the other hand, if this discerning nature ceases with sense data, this is merely the shadow of your differentiation of them, for they are not permanent, and when they cease to exist, so does this so-called mind, like the hair of a tortoise and the horns of a hare. If your dharmakaya can so easily cease to be, who will then practice and realize the patient endurance of the uncreate? After hearing this, Ananda and all those present were completely bewildered. Refuting All Inversion The Buddha said, Practicing students, even after they have realized the nine successive stages of dhyana, still cannot step out of the stream of transmigration and so fail to become arhats, because they cling to this samsara false thinking which they mistake for reality. This is why, though you have heard much of my dharma, you have failed to win the holy fruit. The Inverted Perception After hearing this, Ananda, in bitter tears, prostrated himself with his head, knees, and elbows on the ground, knelt, and brought his two palms together, saying, after I left home to follow the Buddha, I merely relied on his transcendental power and always thought that I could dispense with practice since he would bestow samadhi upon me. I did not know that he could not be my substitute and so lost sight of my fundamental mind. This is why, though I joined the order, my mind was unable to enter the Tao. I was like a destitute son running away from his father. I only realize now, in spite of much listening to the Dharma, 
If I do not practice it, I shall come to nothing, as if I had not heard it, like a man who cannot satisfy his hunger by merely speaking of food. World-honored one, I am caught by the two hindrances, because I do not know the real nature of the still and permanent mind. May the Tathagata be compassionate enough fully to reveal to me that wondrous bright mind, and so open my dull eye. A bright light to reveal the one reality. Thereupon the Tathagata, from the Salvastika on his chest, sent out a radiant multicolored precious light which illuminated the Buddha lands in the ten directions as countless as the dust, and which, after shining on the heads of all Buddhas everywhere, veered to Ananda and the assembly. The Buddha then said to Ananda, I now hoist the banner of great Dharma, so that you and all living beings in the ten directions can realize the pure and bright mind of your profound and subtle nature, and so win the eye that is pure and clear.' 